Honourable Justice Clark, white. Every High Court judge, white. How do I sound? Do I can you hear me okay? Let me just check and see. Okay, it worked. All right, we're we're back. <laughs> so I okay. So um, sorry about all that. Thank you for your patience. That took a little while. Uh, and welcome to Honey Badger Arcade. I'm testing out Rumble. Studio or Studio. Rumble. Com. So Rumble created a new uh, tool called Rumble Studio, which lets me. Uh, multi-stream through Rumble's website, kind of like StreamYards, but I can stream from Rumble to YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, and and Rumble, obviously. Um, I tried to send it out to Kick as well, but it doesn't seem to be taking on there, so I don't know if that's an issue with Kick. But um, it does appear to be working now, so I figured it out. I apologize for the long delay this is a test <laughs> so you know i wouldn't expect a lot um assuming that i can get it to work so uh, so i apologize for the chaos in the beginning but i i got it figured out and i have the um apparently the um prime minister of scotland to thank to help me like figure this out so but we're good now so uh, how are you guys doing let me look at the chat so this this if it, 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 it there's there's like advantages and disadvantages I can already see right off the bat. Uh, one, uh, I guess there is an advantage that it's all done in one place and I can manage everything from here, from this kind of studio space. Like I can um, look at the chat here and it gets displayed on the screen. Although I don't know if I like where it is. That's so, you know, that's like a downside, I guess. And um it does make it really easy to start a stream. And I think this is what a lot of people in the space do. Like I, you know, I watch a lot of other people's content to like get a feel for like what people are doing and what's popular and what works. And what I notice is that most people use StreamYards, just like how back in the days of Gamergate one, most people use Google Hangouts to uh, get together and talk about stuff. And StreamYards is very easy to use, right? And Rumble Studio made their own StreamYards, which I, I, that's what this is. And I kind of like it. Like I can do a presentation, for example. Um, I will switch to this screen here and show this website called themelanin-gamers.com. No, I'm not kidding. That's the name of it. <laughs> Melanin Gamers. Um, Because I thought I would like at least have something to talk about, a couple things to talk about since I'm doing the stream. Uh, I have some criticisms 
of this right off the bat, there there will be a couple limitations. Primarily, you can't really there isn't a whole lot of flexibility in terms of um you know like how you could like set up your streams so i don't get to i don't get to like move everything wherever i want i don't have all these cool little plugins and tools but it does make it a lot less complex you sound bored no no i'm not bored uh, i'm i'm just kind of uh tired <laughs> it's been a long day already and yesterday was a really long day and tomorrow's going to be Look, I'm fasting. It's been a rough few days. I'm really hungry. I want a burger like nobody's business, but I can't have one. So I guess I'm a little I'm a little tired. But I am drinking coffee, which is good. Mm. Anyway, so the other thing is I can't use any bots with this. So no um, arcade machine, no memes, no... Like, I mean, my soundboard works. I can use that because that's pretty much like simple, right? Afuera! And uh, I hope you heard, if, let me know if you heard that. You should have heard that, though. Do you get to use gamer words, though? Well, you were asking how you sound. I said you sound bored. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I can see your chat, and that's cool. And it looks like it displays on the screen, but I can't exactly like, move it around. So there, there's just there's just less flexibility. I would say less, less utility, but on the plus side, and maybe this is what I will do. That's why I kind of did this test on the plus side. I can invite people in, into the chat to chat with me and they can just come on the show right away. And then I can, you know, mute them, kick them out, whatever. So it works very easy. So I am supposed to be talking to somebody who's been involved with sweet baby named, uh, savvy, savvy artist. And she has been doing a lot of like deep dives and uh, I'm going to bring, I'm going to use this tomorrow as a test. Last week I used Twitter spaces, which has its own problems. This week I'm going to try to use rumble studio over on uh, uh, honey badger arcade or honey badger brigade, sorry, HBR honey badger radio and uh, see if that works and how well it works. Great Indoors says, I was the one who brought up yesterday's topic. I didn't know it would last for four hours. It's yesterday we didn't do a show. We took a break. It's okay. I just, you know, I, it's it's okay. I, I understand. It was it was an interesting topic. We'll do it in two parts. I'm not upset about it, but I was very tired <laughs> when it was over. And, and I think it would have been really constructive if we had like, I don't know, like if we had planned it out a little bit, maybe just to do it in a couple of chunks because what i what i guess bugs me about it is that um there's actually a good amount of content to respond to but it's going to be unlisted so it's almost like we did a stream for four hours that very few people are going to watch number one because it's unlisted number two because it's four hours long so no even people who might benefit from watching us respond won't sit and watch that and tr trust me i know because there are videos that people have sent me that I want to watch that are like two and a half hours long that I haven't sat down to watch because it's too long. So I think that um, it's it's not I'm not upset about it. It doesn't bother me, but it does feel like a wasted opportunity. If we could have like made it more time efficient, I think that it would have been more um, there would have been more to benefit from it. So yeah, yesterday was a joke. Ah ha ha! I get it uh i'm a simple man i see afuera i click yes thank you <laughs> all right so seems to be it this i think this will work for our for our needs if depending on the kind of show but um uh most shows i'm gonna do the old-fashioned way and maybe when i do like fireside chats or um you know shows where i can like have guests on maybe even call-ins or something i don't know uh, I'll, I'm, I might use this, this might be better. So, and I, and I want to give rumble studio the benefit of the doubt. I think that they got some good stuff here. Ooh, it looks like I got five people watching on rumble. No four. Cause I am one of them. Uh, hello rumble gang. And again, um, if you, if you're watching, leave me a comment. I want to see if it comes up in the chat. I, I want to test this. Also you Twitch, if you're watching, leave me a comment too. 
I don't think it works with uh, Twitter, even though I am live on Twitter. Um, and that's good because I have something I want to say specifically about Twitter. But yeah, leave me a, send a, send a chat through on Twitch, Rumble, or Twitter, and just so I can see if it comes up. If on Twitter, all you can do is maybe reply or something. I don't, I don't know if it's going to come up in the chat, though, but I'd like to see that. All right. So we're looking at, um, let me switch to the this really quick. Put me back on the screen. Uh, we're going to be looking at, first, a follow-up on a video I made yesterday. So yesterday I talked about um, a, a gentleman uh, who was a, a comic book artist. Um, a comic book artist that unfortunately took his own life. And I, I don't know the person really well, but I know of Ed Ed Pisker. And Ed, I made a um uh tweet about it. And um I I saw that somebody else had made a tweet. I think it was Grums. Let me look at my uh notification, my my notifications. I'll share my screen so you guys can see it. Here's a requested rumble test. Thank you, T Mord Sith and B Bad Sad. Uh, it's working. I can see it, and it's coming up on the screen too. I think it should be up, up upper right corner. So, uh, let me see if I can find the thing that I saw. This guy named In Cell responded. There it is, and yeah, Kyle. Um, shared an image of um, Pesker here on the right and Alec Haloka on the left. And he says, gaming comics, if you do not destroy it, they died for nothing. And and this this I resonated with strongly because this is what I've been talking about for the past 10 years. And especially like in the wake of the Me Too movement, um, cancel culture in general, all of this is related. Like it, it, it is all related. Hey, T Mord Sith, thank you. Here's a test from Twitch. Appreciate it. Uh, Lat says Vivian making those ahegao eyes. Oh, that's probably just the way this tracking. Let me calibrate because I don't want to like I don't want to send the wrong message to you coomers out there. All right. Um, imagine Rumble not show show for its own tool. Yeah, I know, I know. It should it should make sense, but you you just you never know. So, and thank you so much for coming here uh, on my live stream. I, I see that there are like David Jaffe is on. He's live talking to uh, you know Colin Moriarty and like Gothics was live, and uh, I think Harmful Opinions is live. So like the fact that there's anybody here like just entertaining me while I test this is is really like amazing. So thank you. I think John De La Rose is live. I was on his stream yesterday of uh, uh john delrose and we got the news of uh ed pasker passing away and it was official but he did pass away um oh i should share this tab here we go um yeah so here's uh ed ed pasker on the uh on the right and alec haloka on the left and they both um took their own lives because they uh, essentially got canceled by the cancel mob, who are basically their own people. So, um, and Kyle made this statement about it. And I got this comment from uh, in Cell, and I want to respond to it. Um, I said, cancel culture is rehearsal for murder. Because it is. Cancel culture is rehearsal for murder. First you dehumanize, and then it becomes permissible for you to kill. I mean, I'm not saying this is what people intend to do when they cancel, but the effects, it, and sometimes you just, you know, people just take themselves out, and we could have a conversation about whether or not, um, you know, uh, self-deletion is a coward's way out, or how noble it might be, or whatever, but I think that people who are in pain um, that don't have like something to keep them like going or waking up in the morning, they're more vulnerable to this kind of, of thing. 
And I think that that is um, very unfortunate. So, um, and in case you don't know, uh, Alec Haloka here on the left was accused of uh, sexual impropriety, to put it mildly. And it was by Zoe Quinn, who is kind of the uh, spark that began Gamergate. She's not responsible, per se. She's not a really important figure, but um, the incident surrounding her is what started this whole mess. And Alec Haloka was accused by her of uh, sexual mis misconduct, you could say. And even though there was never any evidence, she never went to police, there was never an investigation, there was never a trial, nothing like that, because the people on his side believed women, he was canceled. He lost his job. He lost his company. His life was destroyed. People distanced themselves, distanced, distanced themselves from him. And he fell into a deep depression and um, took his own life. And on the right, you have Ed Pasker. Something similar happened. Uh, if you don't know, Ed Pasker was um, supposedly got caught, like, I don't know, saying, like, inappropriate things, being flirty with girls uh, in the comic book industry, offering them, you know, like, op uh, career opportunities in exchange for, well, who knows what. But nothing really happened. It was just talk at this stage. And it was exposed that he was doing that. And he also was, like, harassed by um, the cancel mob, the cancel pigs, as they call them now. And it drove him also to take his own life. And uh, the thing about it is, though, it, it's, it is sad that this happened. But the thing about this is that I think that is... Um, important to note i guess because people are pointing this out both of these men would have strongly opposed us like they would have called us misogynist sex they wouldn't be like on the side of pro gamer gate they they, they would 100 percent be like woke hipster types right absolutely like probably scumbags but that doesn't mean that we wanted this for them you know and the really unfortunate thing is, is that the people who drove them to do this were their supposed friends. Uh, yeah, so I'm looking at the chat here. Um, it was, most folks don't think they're winning in that headspace, more like taking them down with me sort of thinking. Yeah, he named a bunch of names as he went down, right? I don't feel like Ed's... Uh, Sushi slide, su sewer slide was the same situation. He sounded like it was revenge sewer slide. Yeah, well, that's still a shame, though. I mean, that's that's still really a shame. Coomer is just another slur against male sexuality. I'm I'm just messing with you, man. I just don't want you. Don't sexualize Vivian, though. She's treat her like your little sister. Come on. Um, it's not even about evidence. It was about she's not taking out when the best time would be because she was simply following trend. Uh, Mort says, so fair enough, and one could argue a weakness of character, but you can take the strongest of us all, put them through the ringer, and they'll likely break. Well, yeah, no, I mean, I'm saying, like, it, it is not good to abuse. This is abuse. I'm not, you know, I've talked about how uh, struggle sessions, which is what both of these guys likely went through, are a form of psychological torture, as per, you know, Mao Zedong and the Cultural Revolution in China, it's the same thing. So, yeah, no, I, 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 I agree, but I think people would, some people might say, you know, like, that's like a coward's way out or whatever. I'm acknowledging that it's, it's not easy if you're being, like, bombarded constantly. Uh, Mord Sith says, if memory serves, the old mental protection for prisoners of war wasn't to hold at all costs, but to hold just enough that they can't use the info but give enough to mix, minimize harm. Those that held at all costs came out of those camps broken in all the wrong ways. Oof. Outrun 1979 says another Twitch test. Thank you, Outrun. My typos are strong today. <laughs> Vivian is for head pats. Yes. 
Vivian, haven't you heard, Brian, if it exists, there's prawns of it. I, I don't even want to know. Although I have seen like um there's a there's a uh a, a popular cosplayer. She looks a little bit like Belle Delphine. I'm trying to remember her name. It's either oh, I can't remember her name, but there was a cosplayer who does like sexy cosplay that did a Vivian James cosplay. I happened because I was looking up like Vivian James art on the internet so I could make a video. I made a video that, that basically is like, who is Vivian James? Where for people who are new to Gamergate, I could explain, you know, what Vivian James is and what she means um, as sort of like the official like daughter of, of it was basically the, the daughter of 4chan. Um, but, you know, you could say she's like the, she is symbolizes video games, right? Um, and in it that I remember seeing a cosplay of Vivian. Now we used to have Vivian cosplayers um, during the time of Gamergate. There was uh, a girl I knew, uh, what was her name? Um, so we actually hung out with her a few times. I'm trying to find, yeah, Nicole Sund, I think her name was. And Nonsense Nicole uh, was her name on Twitter for a while, but then she was, I think it was like something Vivian was in her name. And she was always taking pictures of herself wearing a Vivian James cosplay, which is basically just like a hoodie and a bandana, you know, so it's, it's, it's not meant to be sexualized, but I digress anyway. Pet, pet, pet. Thank you. Um, Badger Chan is fair game. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's a different animal as it were. <laughs> Although I don't know, Badger Chan might become more wholesome over time. Uh, Johnny Ortiz says, already seeing vultures targeting Comicsgate blame for Ed. Also, check Blake's Blake T. Wild, aka Smoky Video, deserve the blame too. Yeah, I saw that. So, like when I when I was on the stream with John Delarose yesterday, when the news broke that Ed Pasker, it was confirmed that he took his life by his sister, and people were in the chat saying that that John Delarose was to blame. And I think they're going to try to mobilize a mob against him. Uh, I suspect they're going to do that. So um, but, uh, to my knowledge, and that, look, I haven't followed the Ed Pasker saga super closely because um, I haven't really gotten into comic books in a while. I, I feel like, um, I don't know, like they're, they're, most, they're, they're basically on their last legs other than indie creators, of which, by the way, I'm going to be doing a review for uh, for, for I think it's called uh, Forsaken Gods by uh, my, my man Luke Weber, who's an amazing artist. Really beautiful book. I love his art style. I'll be doing a review of that because that guy really needs somebody to pick him up and give him work. Like, he's a professional. That guy is a pro. But anyway, I haven't been following it super closely. But from what I understand, John Delarose said that um, he did not harass this guy. He just reported on what had happened. And he is, I think he's one of the people that broke the story that uh, Ed Pasker was talking to an underage girl. She was like 17 or something. But I think it came out later that she wasn't underage at the time. It's hard, you know, it's like, I don't know, it's hard. Like, But the thing is, is that even if he did, even if he was doing something that is unethical or even like immoral by like speaking with a girl who is under the age of 18, but not not a child, like, like a, a teenager or whatever. And he's like, what, 30 something, or I think he was. <clears throat> That's all bad and everything. But like, we have laws in place. We have a system in place to deal with this. And... I don't think that John is wrong if the only thing he did was report on it, but he is being he is being told that he has blood on his hands, that it's his fault. Now, maybe there is this thing going on where people are blaming him because he's the first person to break the news and leak the DMs, and then after that, this guy got attacked by his own people until he ended up doing this. But that would be like blaming you know, like um, James O'Keefe for leaking a story that, you know, gets a guy fired from his job and then that guy ends up going on to take his own life. I, that doesn't mean it's James O'Keefe's fault. You know what I mean? Like, if that's true, I don't know. It, I don't know. So, but I'm just saying um, it, it doesn't matter. Like, ultimately, this is what cancel culture does. 
And I think that it creates like this kind of like coward, this, 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 they call it a chilling effect, but I, I think it's, it's basically like an environment of moral cowardice where no one wants to speak out because they're afraid that someone's going to dig up dirt on them because we have the internet, they're going to find something and they're going to like bombard that person with it until they ultimately like either leave the internet completely or essentially end themselves. Uh, Kid Astro says John was his friend though. Or so it was thought by Ed. I don't know. Uh, still have to see Killing Bites. Been on my backlog for a while. Uh, Mortsith, if she becomes more wholesome than my whole head canon of Badger Chan being an alternate reality version of the Badger from Killing Bites might be in danger. I, I, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. <laughs> um... Mord Sith says, just don't think too deeply or the plot holes will swallow you whole. Uh, keep your head in roughly the same headspace as same. All right. Thank you for that. So anyway, so this guy uh, in QCell, who I like, I'm not, you know, I think he's pretty based. He says, am I supposed to pretend these guys weren't devoted progressives? If you don't destroy the Soviet Union, Kamenev would have died for nothing is an odd way to view things. And I said, they absolutely were, but they were also men. And hopefully other men will see this and take heed. The party does not care about you. And that, that's, you know, it's true. Like I said, these guys probably would have hated us. They probably would have called us names. They probably would have tried to get us canceled. But that doesn't mean that we celebrate when this stuff happens to them. I think that we use this as a teaching moment for other men so they don't make the mistake of thinking that that like you know if they're in the woke cult that they won't be the first up against the wall because they will because they are by their very nature the enemy you know what i mean uh kid astro says uh, i agree with you about the anti cancel culture thought not on takes about women or biology or science uh you don't agree with me on those takes is that what you're saying it's okay if you don't. I made like a, a comment or not a comment. I, I made a, a video that you probably saw where I talked about the Barbie movie because Shakira, you guys might know, Shakira basically said that sh her children did not like the Barbie movie and she agrees with them because the Barbie movie emasculates men. And in that I went into some detail where I talked about how um, the Barbie movie is special because it exposes what women generally think about men. Like the fact that it made over a billion dollars, you know, after, like well after it was out. And this was despite the fact that the marketing was really misleading in terms of what the content was going to be. Um, that just shows you that, that like the, the rant that America Ferreira does at the end, which is the, old, it, it is, that is the money shot. That is the takeaway. Everyone knows it. Women shared it all over the internet for months after the movie came out and they all resonated and they all said, this is my lived experience. This is the truth. Even conservative women have said that. I, I remember Brett Cooper said she liked it. Uh, Shuan Head tried to say, oh, it's kind of a, you know, what did she call it? A Rorschach test or something? Like, you you either love it or you hate it or you think it's really feminist or you think it's really conservative. No, it's, it's not. It's not conservative at all. Um, and um, I was just saying, well, yeah, this is just what women think about men. And Albert Nada, I think it's Albert. It was McMahon Hater said, I think that's Albert Nader. I'm not sure because his logo is the same. He said, uh, does that include your wife, Hannah, Allison, and Karen? And does that mean the same for the birth of a nation and all white people? And I thought that was just stupid. Like, I'm saying this is what women think. Allison, Karen, Hannah, Lindsay, they are the exception, but that does not disprove the rule. Like, the movie made a billion dollars. Lindsay hated it. I, had, I watched it with her once. You know, and she was like, that was terrible. But a lot of women did like it. <laughs> so, you know, and it was majority of women that watched it. I also showed the data on that. It was like three, two thirds of the audience that saw the movie were women. 
Of course it was two thirds. It was, it was marketed at women. The men who went were probably their kids, their boys, or, you know, like their, their gay friend or something. Like in most cases, it probably was. So, um, Kid Astro says, like, I think the term toxic masculinity was talking about men not being allowed to cry. Yeah, that's, that's BS though. Men are not being held back from crying because of toxic masculinity. Men are, men, first of all, are just less likely to cry. Like our tear ducts are smaller. We're less likely to be moved to tears. Second of all, men in general know that crying doesn't help. It doesn't do anything. You know what I mean? So men generally are solution oriented people. Like we look for ways to fix problems. Women tend to like talking about problems. How was the movie? Terrible. Black QCD says you have to have an IQ above 9,999 to view it as a conservative film. Yeah, for sure. Um, no, I remember Michael Knowles tried to make the argument for that. And I was like, this guy doesn't, he's stupid. Like he doesn't understand movies or story at all. Like, I, I mean, like his take on the Barbie movie was so bad that I'm like, I don't want to hear you say anything about the Bible because you clearly aren't going to be paying attention. Like, I'm sorry, but I he is he his media literacy is like in the toilet. <laughs> I I've been able to pay attention to that. So, uh, Lat QCD says men are allowed to cry; they just don't do it in front of women because women are repulsed by it and it solves no problems. Yes, that's true. I mean, unless it's like your mother or like a sister or some close relative. But like I, you know, I cried around. I I don't cry often, but I did once. I think I cried once a few months back when I was talking to my father, who was very sick, and I was crying because I missed him a lot, and I didn't think I was worried that I I wouldn't get to see him before he passed because I moved away from Chicago and came here to Virginia, and I don't really make a lot of money. So traveling is just not in the cards and my car has got like over 200,000 miles on it. So like, there's just a lot of obstacles, it seems, which is why I'm trying to like grow my own thing because I don't, I don't know. I worry that HBR is just like uh, unsustainable in its current form. So I'm always trying to figure out how to make it bigger and more successful so that I can like do things, you know, like go visit my family. And I cried uh, when I was talking to, on the phone with my dad, because he was, you know, he's like in a, in a nursing home and he's wheelchair bound and he's had leukemia and I'm over here and I feel like a bad son. That was why I, I did that. You know, I felt like I was a bad son because I wasn't with my father and I love my father, you know? So like, there's no shame in that. But my wife might've been, I don't know. She didn't, we didn't really talk about it. But she did feel like, you know, like um, maybe there was some something chemically going on with me or hormonally. Like I need to get my T levels checked or something, you know. <laughs> and I was like, no. And then, but then and we 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 hash it out. It's it's fine. But like, yeah, I think Lack QCD is right. I think that women generally don't want to see the men cry. That's why feminists push for it because they want to give women more reasons to be disgusted at men. So women shame men for crying while also saying that they should cry more. And that's just the truth. It's, it's a double standard. It's a, it's hypocrisy on purpose. Kid Astro says, I don't feel, if I don't feel comfortable crying around a girl, then she obviously is not for me. I need at least a few brain cells for love to blossom. Yeah, for sure. Um, I agree. You should like if men have a, uh, I'll say still waters run deep. That's what I say. I think that men have the capacity for love and compassion that is goes far deeper than just like being able to cry and women they can cry for anything my like lindsay cries when you know she's like her clothes are still wet after she's running through the, through the dryer <laughs> and it hasn't like dried yet and she's like worried about being late for work like she will cry for that she will cry because um, you know, like, uh, I don't know, like I haven't taken out the garbage yet and, and I just, and I forgot, you know, and, and I have to like talk her down. Like, it, like 
the things that make women cry and make men cry are very different. And it's okay. It's okay. Because I think when women cry, it is specifically to get men to, to move, right? To like motivate men to action. I think when we understand that men and women are different and that's all right, um, we're not going to be worrying about who's doing too much of what, you know? Just another case of women creating a problem and then blaming men for it. Yeah. I don't, I also don't know how having emotions or emotional maturity equals crying in public. It doesn't actually. Mm. Ah. Okay. Anyway, let's look at one other thing. I'm going to switch to this and uh, let me know if this works. Sorry about the audio problems from before. But I think we got it all figured out now. So apparently there's this group called Melanin Gamers and uh, they are the, another Sweet Baby Inc. So I wanna find out who they are. This is all like, I've never looked at this website before. I'm just now bringing it up. It's, it, it looks cheap to me. Oh, here we go, event, International Women's Day, celebrating celebration with Melanin Gamers. So basically Melanin Gamers is gonna be exclusive to women which is not a shock at all because these uh, woke groups always put women first. So what, who are they? What do they do? Let's see about squad events, partner events and inquiries. Uh, let's go to about, let's check that out first about us. Melanin gamers is dedicated to increasing diversity and inclusion in the video games industry. It is more than a gaming community. It is a show of support, a cry for some desperately needed change and a safe space, an online and in, in real life community for people of color with a U, Kalur, so this is either in Canada or the UK, to come together, share ideas and feel represented. We want to be seen and heard. It is a necessity in the current climate we are living in and we believe that by creating this platform, we will be able to strive towards changing an industry so that it reflects all those who are part of it we are not calling for needless tokenism, but a real shift in ideas or a real shift in the tide um, from the grassroots to the very top. How about new? I don't think anything about that is grassroots. These people are, I bet, I bet you now $5. I bet you $5. No, wait, I bet you $1. <laughs> These people are government funded and they're backed by the Department of Homeland Security. I guarantee it. Doesn't Australia also spell it with a U? Are there black people in Australia? Um, so, okay. So this was a whole paragraph of the same old talking points. Are you guys tired of these talking points yet? Like, I know that when Gamergate was going on in 2014, and when you tried to bring attention to this, most people would shrug and be like, oh, yeah, what's wrong with diversity? That That's not a big deal. Like, well, I like it. Yeah, it's good. Inclusion, yeah. Why wouldn't it be safe for women? Why can't we have these things? I, I don't have a problem. I just want ethics and journalism. And I'm like, that this these things don't mean what they're telling what you think it means just because they tell you. It never means what they say it means. They're always they're saying one thing and they mean something else. They mean exclusion. They mean the revolution. It's just like commie crap. That's all it is. Uh, there's people in Australia. I thought that was just a meme. <laughs> Mort Sith, note that the dude on the right is wearing a Dragon Ball shirt and a red ribbon hat. He's he's a real fan, okay? Uh, Aborigines. Aborigines are, yeah, they're, they're people of color, technically. John Richards, hail. Um, okay, so about us. They, these are their goals. Increase unity. Have an upcoming event, workshop, or project that you want to shout about? Drop us a line, and we'd love to hear all about it. Showcase. MG is a collaborative initiative, working with amazing affiliates and community members to promote better representation. Game together. Sometimes we just sit down and game. If you're an Apex legend, headshot pro, or just want to chat, then get in the know and get involved. Somehow I doubt that any of this is true. Like... Isn't it cringe that they're using the uh, the Vulcan hand sign here? Live long and prosper. That's like that's like hello fellow kids, hello fellow geeks. I I too watch the Trek of Stars, <laughs> the program called Trek of Stars into the stars. Um, our mission MG 
at its heart is a group of dedicated advocates committed to improving representation in popular media. As part of our mission, we regularly hold panel discussions, workshops, and presentations where you terrify people into giving you what you want on industry-related topics which aim to empower and educate. We have previously worked with schools, colleges, businesses, and major industry events to advocate the need for better representation and to provide a platform for others to access to access and thrive in the video games industry. Can I, I'm gonna tell you a quick little story. When I was going to university, um, I was like two, 2011, 2010, and I was taking a um, an art history class. I think it was art history. It was one of my classes. And we talked a little bit about uh, advocacy. It was like 2012 because uh, Anita Sarkeesian came up. So someone in the classroom, brought up Anita Sarkeesian's like feminist frequency videos about, um, you know, what was it? Uh, tropes versus women in video games, right? And it was like this young uh, black boy. And he was talking about how like th this is what he wanted to do. He, wa he and some of his classmates wanted to go into ga game development because the school I went to had a game development major. And he was using her work as the skeleton from which to build on and i disputed that like in class i said no actually you know those a lot of the things that she's saying are, are like factually incorrect and they can be disproven and his response was something like um essentially trying to dismiss me on the basis of me being a man like oh well as a man how could you possibly say what women's experience is right i think that this is the way in which these people affect change. They, um, <laughs> they, this is the way that they affect change. They get to the youth, they make the youth feel like they're going to change the world, and they put this stuff in the schools, which is why melanin, melanin gamers, that's so gross to, to put it that way, are they start by saying, We have previously worked with schools colleges and then businesses and major industry events but it's all about the schools and colleges you get them when they're young you make them feel like their work is going to change the world and then you um you put them out into the world and i bet that those kids that him and his he had like a, a couple of female uh friends in class and they thought they just assumed i was i just hated women they were just like Oh well, yeah. This this is exactly the kind of thing that we're trying to change. You know, when I said actually, you know, Samus existed and Ms. Pac-Man existed. <laughs> you know, and they're not objectified. They're not like, and nobody gave a shit. Like, none of this is real. You're basically you're fighting ghosts that that were created by somebody else. And they're like, well, this is exact. You're proving my point. And I was like, all right, well, whatever. Like, I'm I'm you know I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fight with somebody like you know, that's less experienced than, than I am uh, on this. But I, I know I know that that's what happened. Like th those people graduated and they entered the workforce and now they work in the workforce and they're working in the unions and they're working in development and they're working in journalism and they're in every, and they're in, they're in every aspect of our culture and society. And they're there to be heroes, to change their, their the cage that they live in. Like they're in a prison of their own mind, the, a prison of oppression, and they want to change the prison. And they're not able to, like, they can't have, like, I don't know, like uh, an individualistic, heroic narrative of their own. And it's sad. I do, I, I feel sad for them. Like, the fact that you have to make a website called Melanin Gamers so that you feel like you are somebody. I mean, it's just really sad, man. Look, environment, problem. Not enough places for people of color to come together in a safe place where they can share ideas and feel represented. How we help. Creating a safe place for gamers and content creators to come together. So what they're saying is, is that people of color and women, because let's be real, that's what they mean, have never historically been able to play video games. Like, I didn't exist. Like, I don't exist. Like, the fighting game community never existed. You know? Um, but now they just, they're, they're positive of that, you know, as a, I guess like as a Gen Xer myself, um, this should be shocking to me, but it really isn't like, 
these people have been lied to, and it's a real shame. They've been lied to about their own existence, and they believe it. So you're gonna all your all this means creating a safe place for gamers or space rather safe space for gamers is segregation. That's what they want. Representation problem: not enough visible people of color in the gaming industry and within the games that we play. Again, it's not a problem. They've always existed, but the, okay. I could make the argument that they've always existed, but I think that that's playing into their framework. I think the important question is, does it matter? Because let me think about how many video games I've played that have had Puerto Rican protagonists. None. None. That didn't actually do any damage to my life. I'm fine. So how is it possible? Even, even if I just narrowed it, like if I broadened it to just Latinos in general, which I don't think is a race, by the way, but I digress. Um, even if I broadened it to Latinos, there's very few. Like the guy from, what's that game where you have the grappling hook arm and you can like blow everything up? I think I played that one. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. But I'm, I didn't even, I mean, it was okay. I didn't love it, you know? I don't know. Like it was <laughs> Call of Juarez, maybe? I, I don't. I don't know. But like, it didn't matter to me, you know. I, I almost pine for a day where your video game protagonists are like faceless um, and raceless and genderless, just robots, just like Pac-Man. Like Pac, well, Pac-Man's still a man, so we can't have that. But you know, like, uh, like, uh, yeah, you're just like a robot, like Robotron 2084, whatever that game was. Just bring that back. Like, th let's just remove it all together because people, like, now that we have higher fidelity graphics, we get these people, these people, they get obsessed with those characteristics. Just Cause. Yeah, yeah, Just Cause. Thank you. Yeah, I played Just Cause 3, I think. And uh, I, I mean, it actually kind of annoyed me because it was, it was like it takes place in South America, but it was trying so hard to be, I don't know, like Latin. Like it just, it was just like too, I don't know. It was like too on the nose and I, I was annoyed by it actually. That aspect, I like the gameplay. I like being able to destroy everything and all that, but I really didn't give a shit. You know, you know what it was like? It was like playing a Robert Rodriguez movie. And the thing about Robert Rodriguez movies is that he thinks the most important thing about his movies is that it's made by a Mexican. So he crams that shit into everything and it's really boring. It's like, dude, just make a movie. Stop. I, I get it. I get it. Your name ends with an easy. I get it. <laughs> you know, Hubert. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Detroit become human. Uh, yeah, that one's super woke, isn't it? Uh, how we help. Melanin Gamer showcases people of color in the industry to highlight the work that they are doing. And so others know that there are in-face people who look like them working in the industry itself. Yeah, that's not, the representation argument's not true. People don't become magically like better at something because they see somebody that looks like them in something. That's kind of a disturbing, disturbingly narcissistic view to have. So. And of course, their their idea of representation is all black dudes having the same fucking haircut. Unity problem: gamers of color are feeling isolated, like there aren't people who look like them, or feeling as though they are the only ones going through certain situations online. That sounds like the other thing. How we help? You know, that's another thing. Like, you know, so I've been I've been playing Hell Divers too. I don't know the race or gender of any of the people I play with, save for few, right? I'm not even thinking about that. It's like the least important thing, right? The only thing I wanna do is complete objectives so I can get medals, so I can buy more stuff, so I can do better at completing objectives. Like that's all I want. And they're just like, but, but, have, you, but have you looked under the helmet to see what his skin color is? Do you know if that's a woman, man, or non-binary individual? No, I don't give a shit like that. Like, I don't care. <laughs> Mental illness haircut, yeah. But you've seen the black version of that, right? Where it's like short dreadlocks, but only on one side. Like the, it's so boring, guys. It's so boring. Uh, development. Like the more things are diverse, the more everything looks the same. Uh, development problem. Aspiring esports content creators not knowing how to get into the industry or even if it is for them. It totally, what the fuck are you talking about? Sorry for the language. Okay. So maybe you know this, maybe you don't know this. If you do know this and I'm repeating myself, I apologize. But 
One thing that really got me into video games, like I, I liked video games from when I was a kid. I remember the first thing I saw was like, it was either Asteroids or Space Invaders. And I was like, I was hooked. I was like, well, what is this, right? I, I mean, I, I didn't see Pong until later, but I remember seeing uh, Asteroids was the first game I ever saw. And Space Invaders and Missile Command, and I was hooked. I was like, I love this stuff. And when I saw Donkey Kong, I remember I went to a carnival and there was a little arcade tent and there were arcade machines and they had Donkey Kong in there. And it was probably a fire hazard because they had like these long power strips and it was like, you know, under a tent, but it was raining. And I mean, you were just waiting for like a fire to just spontaneously burst. But I saw Donkey Kong and I thought I was looking at magic. I saw Pac-Man, which, which I think was the first video game I ever saw in color. And it was, it made the news. Okay. Like people were like, there's a new video game that's taking a world by storm, Pac-Man. They showed it. And people were like, how did they do that? Right. But, and I was all into that stuff. I loved all of it. I played those, uh, whenever I got a quarter, you know, I, me and my friends, we meet up, we'd have one quarter and we play the game together. We take turns with the lives because we didn't have a lot of money. So it was like a big deal. Right. I, I remember Dragon's Lair blowing my mind and all that. But when I played Street Fighter 2, that changed everything. Like, I played Street Fighter 1, I played Karate Champ, Yar Kung Fu, you know, uh, Tiger Road. Like, I love those martial arts games. There were lots of them. Lots of them. Um, Vigilante, Renegade. I think I said Renegade already, but you know. But, uh, Double Dragon. But when Street Fighter 2, well, oh, Final Fight, when Street Fighter 2 came out, uh that changed everything i was like that that was my jam like i play fighting games that's like my shit right there i love to play fighting games my favorite thing because there's so much that it offers like fighting games can have infinite replay value effectively if you are constantly in competition and you're you're getting better and you're like learning more little things you know you're learning little nuances of each character. You're trying to like main different ones. And like, it, it's like a, it's, it, it, there's just so much more replayability into fighting games. And my friends, we were all into fighting games. We played them together. And like, my friends were mostly like non white. You know, like, I mean, I, I had white friends too, but most of them were not white. They were either Latino like me or they were black, you know, or whatever. And fighting games as a, um, I guess you could say as a genre, as a subgenre of, of video games, became humongous. It was tournaments all over the country. I was, I was like the guy, I was the guy that in my neighborhood, I would walk into the local um, greasy spoon and they'd have like two machines, right? And if one of them was Street Fighter 2 or Street Fighter 2 Turbo or something, I was the kid that came in there and took everybody else off the machine in my neighborhood. I was, I was that kid, right? Um, and I, I was, just, I was just really, I was really good at those and I still am pretty good at those, you know, and, um, uh, the, the competition kept me, kept me sharp. And so this became a big deal. It became a new thing. I think that in a way, maybe I'm wrong, but I think that esports started from fighting games. I think that was the first thing, like before first person shooters were even a thing. I think fighting games were the first esports. Like there was like tournaments right people would get flown to vegas to play street fighter 2 or well mostly it was street fighter but also like mortal kombat and uh marvel versus capcom and shit like that um and it was all minorities it was like mostly minorities like people from with like who, who are the top players they were all like asians right they were like or asian kids <laughs> like so like this idea that like oh we don't know if it's for that's a lie like it's it's just a lie it's not even ignorance it's just lies why do they lie so much because this isn't about that it's not about representation it's about control that's what they want so when they say this it just pisses me off because i know they're lying but do we do okay annabelle i'm gonna do are your are your uh pronouns i want to know what your pronouns are uh i was tired of not being represented in an industry that i love and i'm also a patron of you should play tekken or something um apex well doesn't 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 like are, are all games diverse now like isn't overwatch super diverse didn't they just make every character gay like i think all the characters in overwatch are gay now 
Um, I like how they're like, t oh, greatest gaming. Uh, okay, let's look at let's look at their gamer cred. Okay, let I'm gonna I'm gonna analyze the gamer cred real quick. Let's find out how how legit these people are. Um, Lat says Soul Calibur and Dead or Alive were the only fighting games I had fun with. I, yeah, I liked. I'm good at. I'm decent with Soul Calibur. Um, especially Soul Calibur 2 on Xbox. Hell yeah. I played uh, Ivy. I was hooked. When I got to play Ivy, I was like, I think before Ivy, I was, um, I played, um, who did I play on Soul Calibur before Ivy? Oh, Siegfried. I played Siegfried because I've always liked the, the great sword as a weapon. When I play the Souls games, I always play a guy with a great sword. I just like the really big sword. I was a big fan of Berserk. And so, like, that's what I rock. So I played Siegfried. But then when I saw Ivy and I saw that weapon, because that was why it was the weapon. I Trust me, it was the weapon. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't the boobs. It was the weapon. And the haircut. I love the haircut. But, um, yeah, I, was, I, I definitely was into Soul Calibur. Wasn't the first tournament in Tetris? I don't know. I have to double check that. I don't know. Maybe. South Koreans. Yeah. Assassin's Creed, LOL. Uh, why are you lying? Why are you always lying? <laughs> why are you lying? Why are you lying? I'm the best at Tekken 3 and 5, as well as Mortal Kombat 9. Her two weapons, yes. <laughs> My Ivy was tons of fun too. She as was yeah, Nightmare's all right. That was a nightmare is like kind of edgy boy fuel, though. You know, it was like I'm an evil knight with a big hand. I prefer Siegfried. Like the, when they brought back Siegfried in, I think it was uh, four. I don't know. It might have been four. Those two massive weapons <laughs> and her sword. Yeah. Um. I was never. I I got pretty good at Mortal Kombat two. I think I was a pretty good Scorpion and Raiden. A Raiden. Sorry, Raiden. Even though that's not how you pronounce that. Um. But. It wasn't really my jam. I, I I thought that Mortal Kombat was a little bit, uh, in terms of like the craft, it was a little bit lazy, and I didn't like that the characters were all basically the same size. There wasn't a lot of variety in their designs. I, I found that Street Fighter and like Darkstalkers and uh, Marvel versus Capcom and all that. They, there was a lot. Oh, and King of Fighters. I think there was a lot of um, Samurai Showdown is a really good one. I think there was a lot more like uh more fun being had with the character designs guilty gear you know so but anyway um mord sith her favorite game is where an italian is the protagonist where's that personal representation in her favorite game talum was very easy to dominate with yeah ta talum you know what you know there was a game do you guys remember uh battle arena toshinden I was really good at Battle Arena Toshinden. And and I know it's not a great game, but dude, that is a game I really want to see remade. I want to see Battle Arena Toshinden come back. I want to see Bloody Roar come back. And I want to see, there was a couple of other, Capcom did a couple of, uh, they were playing around with some ideas and they had this game called Star Gladiator, which I really liked. Tech Romancer, which was like giant robots. That one was super fun. Uh, Power Stone. I'd, I'd like to see them try to bring those back. But I don't know if I don't know if they will. Maybe I don't know. I mean, start with Dark Darkstalkers at least. You know, Sung Mina was another. Yeah, I like to play Sung Mina. I did really like Killick too, but I didn't really play him much. Yes to Bloody Roar. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's look at the gamer crest. So Annabelle, um, biggest gaming moment was winning a game all by myself with Watson and Apex. That hard carry. Favorite game and why? My favorite game is Assassin's Creed because visual, storyline, gameplay, and it's enjoyable. I feel like Assassin's Creed, she likes it because it's woke, too. And that's, I, I think even from the beginning, it was kind of woke. Because I remember if you when you first boot up the first Assassin's Creed, there's this disclaimer right in the beginning that tells you that this game was made by a diverse team. Right at the beginning. And I, and I, I remember seeing it, I was like, well, that's weird. And I didn't think about it because that was like so long ago. But now that I look back on it, it was like a warning. It was like a harbinger. Uh, greatest gaming hero and biggest villain. Favorite gaming hero is Ellie from The Last of Us. Yeah, because she is one tough cookie. That is one strong woman. What? Okay, but she's saying The Last of Us, but I know she means Last of Us Part 2. She's trying to tell us she likes the shitty-ass Last of Us Part 2. Ellie in the first Last of Us was a decent character. I didn't care for the the um, the DLC for that. I I felt like that was Neil Druckmann trying to retcon some shit. That's what I think. 
Um, because none of the game, like none of what happens in the first game, uh, seems to like give any indication that that is like the truth about her. And there's something super weird about two, what are they like 11 years old, two like underage girls, not even tweens like kissing, right? That's, that's weird to me. Villain or rather anti-hero is Jason Todd, AKA the Arkham Knight. Oh my God. Really? That's, that, that's your favorite. Okay, guys, let, let me, let me read through all these and then we'll, we'll give, we'll give, uh, I'll get your guys's answer. So think about your favorite game, favorite gaming hero and, uh, and, and villain. Okay. So Alan, okay. Biggest, uh, let's see, favorite game. My favorite game would probably be Micromaniacs. It is a PS1 classic, and I don't expect many people to know it, but that would probably be the de facto game that got me into gaming. Uh, it was a racing game with a twist where you could ran it, uh, ran instead, drove cars, and all the missions were fun and different. Wow, that's weird, weirdly written. Uh, and I don't know his hero and villain because it's not showing here, so I don't know what to say. I guess, thanks, Alan. I don't, Micromaniacs? Like, really? Okay, Koye. Um, favorite game, Saints Row 2. It was a game way ahead of its time in relation to the things you could do, but it also had a good storyline and memorable characters, which you feel for as the story developments. Is this a, is this a, is this a stereotype? How old are these people? They look like Zoomers or Millennials. Um, greatest gaming hero and biggest villain. Master Chief is my guy. Voss from Far Cry is best bad guy. So this guy is going to get fired uh, because he likes the wrong things. Saints Row 2, pretty sure that's a, that's a problematic game. Uh, Master Chief, mm-mm, mm-mm. I mean, like, I'm saying that these are decent answers. Voss is spelled wrong, though. I think it's two A's. But, um, but yeah, that's not going to work for, like, a woke game company. So he is a researcher, lead illustrator. Uh, TJ, community liaison. I don't even know what that means. I wonder if he's into Dragon Ball. So, like, like, does okay. So, real quick, doesn't this kind of also disprove the representation matters thing? Like, what what is is Goku black? Why is he a why is he a Dragon Ball fan? Goku doesn't look like him. How does that work? I mean, help me out here, um, Brosif. Help me out here, TJ. You <laughs> isn't that a character from Grand Theft Auto uh, San Andreas? No, that's CJ. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Favorite game and why? Skyrim slash Fallout 4. I love the open world and freedom of choice for character creation story decisions. I've I have I've have put hundreds of hours in both games through multiple console generations, and every time is a new experience. Greatest gaming hero and biggest villain hero. And me, I, I enjoy and play single player games where I can create and customize my own character and make my own choices on how to save the world. Sure, that's why you said Skyrim and Fallout 4. Also, my character I create will have the best drip possible. Villain Zay Hanort from Kingdom Hearts. Man was a multiversal hater who linked up with other hater versions of himself to reset all that we know via the manipulation of people's hearts and emotions. Gigantic Waste Man. Gigantic Waste Man. Okay. I guess. Um, Goku isn't white. Yeah, but he's not black. That's what I'm saying. But people say he's white. They they will say he's white. No, nobody, nobody, like, that's the thing. Like, nobody cares Goku's race. Nobody cares. They shouldn't, anyway. Um, James. Favorite game and why? Back then, DMC, Devil May Cry. Is that what that means? Now League of Legends. DMC for the skill moves. League of Legends for the love-hate affair. Big community, ever-changing game, and constant high skill ceiling. Uh, yeah, Devil May Cry is good. Uh, greatest gaming hero and biggest villain. Actually have none for this one. Such a huge roster to pick one. Well, that was lazy. Okay, so what are you guys' uh, favorite game? Uh, you know, it's kind of, that's, that's, I hate asking favorite questions because it, you're always changing that, you know, like it's kind of hard to like pin something down. Um, so which DMC? Yeah, he didn't say, it just says DMC. Oh, you know what? Maybe he means, I hope he doesn't. 
but maybe he means the the actual like game called DMC. That was like the the Ninja Theory remake. That's like the most hated Devil May Cry game. Maybe may, right up there with Devil May Cry Two. I don't know if that's what he means. I hope not. That would kill your cred, honestly. Uh, speaking of Devil May Cry, I'm really enjoying Five, but I haven't uh, played in a while. I'm planning on streaming it maybe later this month. Um, I haven't played Five ever, but I'm I'm enjoying myself. It's just I don't know. It's just a lot. Uh, okay, DMC is great. Not the reboot though. The reboot was fun to play. I just didn't like the, the choices they made with the story. And the narrative, eh, DMC's got some weird narrative stuff in it, like kind of woke stuff in it. Favorite hero, Estelle Bright from Trails in the Sky. Favorite villain, The Between Shodan from System Shock. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. And uh, Martin Walker from Spec Ops The Line. Uh, I have ne I've never played that, but I heard good things about Spec Ops The Line. Uh, Mord Sith, okay, ones that are just gaming hero, Hayate Jin, oh yeah, Hayate Jin, is that, I know that name, what's that from? Villain Eggman, okay, so yeah, Robotnik, I like Dr. Wily, I don't know if that's a popular choice, I also like Sigma, but I like Dr. Wily, Dr. Wily's classic, that's why, he's classic, it's like liking Bowser, you know? Um. Let's see. I, I can I can probably come up with a really good one though. Favorite Ocarina of Time. That's easy. Yep. Uh give a date and I will say give a date for what? Um Greatest Hero and Villain Kane. Oh yeah, Kane's good. And OG Kratos. Yeah, yeah. Kane from Legacy of Kane is is a good that was a really fun game. Although I don't know, man. I can't really pick one. I like playing Drakengard 2. I like listening to Skyrim's music, uh, but Morrowind's music gets me choked up. A lot of games I like are abstract in nature. Xenogears was almost all of my favorite villains, or has. The game is full of well-written, com complex villains. Uh, that's his name from Cyberbots slash Marvel vs. Capcom. Oh, yes, that's right. Yes, yes. I knew the name. I knew the name, but I had him confused with um, the main character from Star Gladiator. I think his name... He had a name that was a bit similar. He was in Marvel's Capcom 2 as well. Um, yeah, so like, I don't know, man. This, this is, uh, I want to see who they have worked on. So I'm going to try and figure out what they've worked on really quick. Uh, partnerships and sponsorships. I'm trying to bring this up. <laughs> Shodan is also another great villain, yeah. He had a huge headband. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so let me go to partners, maybe. Partner and events inquiry, inquiries. Um, so they do training, workshops. They they probably they probably make a lot of money. I'm I'm not I'm not even gonna like lie, but I don't see what where they're uh what what who they've worked with, you know. Uh, news. Let's see. Maybe there's something under news. I'm just going to put this back on the screen here. News and updates. Articles. Um, the Watch. Jordan Calhoun. Pick Coley is back. Uh, yeah. You know, um, I don't know if I told you guys this before, but the, when I very very first time i ever like considered doing a podcast it was for fun right and i had this black friend uh his name was myron and i i knew him from when we were little kids um and he wanted to do a podcast and i remember him saying he said he wanted to call it the brown geeks podcast and i did a few episodes with him but from the very beginning i was like why are we calling it that that was my my first thought why are we calling it that brown geeks pod he's like, well because we're brown i was like who cares like why, why? Uh, even then like this is a long time ago this is like when podcasting was very new you know and we did a few episodes you might even still find i think he may have continued doing it i don't know if it's still called the same thing but um it always bothered me that people would get so fixated on on these on these things it always bothered me i've always i've always had like a disdain for that you know 
So I'm not seeing any uh, work that they've done, but I do know that they are associated with Sweet Baby Inc. I'm not going to hold this thing up for too much longer. Um, I guess I'll go back to their homepage. We should probably be on the lookout for whatever they um, end up getting involved with. But I guess like the broader, the broader point though, the broader point I think is to bear in mind that this is um, normal. This is like, this is the normal state of things because these people were educated in our schools and they were educated about this kind of victimhood mentality, this revolutionary spirit as it were. And uh, they're gonna carry that out into like everything they do. And so we're gonna we're gonna end up um, you know, having to confront that, really. So uh, that means that we're gonna have to remain vigilant. That's all I can say, you know. And uh, thank God for sweet baby ink detected to keep you guys in the know of what's going on. Uh, let's see, a date for a favorite game. Uh, Shodan was a great villain. Okay. I guess Half-Life, so Gordon Freeman, that's a good one. Um, they listed a bunch of normie stuff. It is very normie stuff, like you not living with racism. I'm I'm not. Did you hear family do racism every day? Do you hear family do race? No, I don't. No. What does that even mean? I'm frankly, I don't I don't actually concern myself with any of that at all. I'm I am free from that. Never played Mist 3. I did play Mist and it's spoof pissed the only scary part of this is how to avoid turning this whole problem into an inverse social credit system well that you know that's kind of like see the thing is these groups this is how cancel culture starts so first you have groups like this and then they start like changing your shit they go in and they vandalize the stuff that you do and then you say hey why are you guys doing this and then they call you a racist and sexist and then they try to get you canceled that's literally what they're doing that's what happened Cabrutus Rambo put together a list in Steam and everyone wants to take away his games, which is what? He spent thousands of dollars on his Steam library. Can you imagine? Like, I know that it, it is, the, the fact is, is that if you have games on Steam, they're not really yours if Steam can take them away. But that doesn't make it okay that they want to do that. So, like, we have to, like, we have to stand up for this. So this is a trap in a way, but if we know you know, that it's going on, we can ridicule. And also, by the way, um, I got it on good, uh, on good um, authority that there is, I don't know if it's still free, I'm going to see uh, if it is, but there was a game that was called Content Warning, which I think you can get for free right now. And it is an indie game, and it's multiplayer. And I plan on trying it out at some point. Yeah, free for the first 24 hours. So it's free right now on Steam. Get it. Get it if you can. It's an indie title. It's non-woke. I got it. I got it recommended to me from John. That is a problematic white guy. And um, yeah, let's let let's get it. Let's all get a copy and maybe play it together. So it's supposed to be like a horror game or something. I don't know. We'll check it out, but I got to head out now because I got a show in like an hour. So, and I got to feed the dog. Um, that's another problem. I can't, I can't show Jojo. So this, this, this might be like a fail. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, um, this is me trying out the rumble studio. Seems to be uh, okay. It's got some limits, but it seems to work in a pinch and it could be good for uh, doing streams with multiple people. So, um, as far as my favorite games goes, I mean, that's a tough one. But I will quickly, I'll just say I love fighting games. I love Street Fighter. I think my favorite Street Fighter is Street Fighter 4 right now. Uh, that's probably not a popular opinion, but I thought 5 was a, uh, a money vacuum and 6 looks like it's more of the same. And I didn't care for 3 because I don't like the character design. So I'm going to land on 4, although I like the Alpha series as well. Um... I also really like uh, Samurai Showdown, Tekken, the whole series, uh, Soul Calibur, but I also like Dark Souls, Dark Souls 3, Bloodborne, Dark Souls 2 is okay. 
um, Sekiro, Elden Ring, Armored Core. I mean, I could I could go on. <laughs> so those are those are some of my favorites. Favorite villain? I like Handsome Jack. That's just like what comes to mind right off the bat. I also like Doctor Wily. Um, <sighs> yeah. So, and favorite hero? Um, probably, probably. Uh, I don't like Double Dragon, the Jimmy and Billy Lee, because that one has like special memories for me. Bionic Commando is a favorite. I don't know, um, but those are just some thinking uh, off the top of my head. So, Soul Edge, I yeah, I had that, dude. That was like that had the most hype intro in all of gaming at the time. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Soul Edge, holy shit! But okay, look, I gotta go. Thanks, guys, for coming on the show. If you like this video, please hit like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys think about uh, like this whole like Rumble Studio setup and um let me see what else uh and share the video i guess um i'll see if there's a way for me to edit out the beginning so that the sound it's not like no sound for like a long ass time but if you if one of you guys can put a time code in i will pin it so people can jump to that point and uh i will talk to you all in the next one thanks guys for coming on